In this lesson we're going to discuss variables and variables are like a container that hold a value. Unlike a lot of other programming languages in Python we don't have to tell Python what kind of value we're going to hold in our variable. All we have to do is declare the variable. So the way that we do that is we give it a name. In this case we're going to call it v. We're going to assign v to a value and that value can be anything. It can be a text value, text string, it can be a number. Um, we can put decimals in there um, and we'll explore those as we go throughout these lessons. But for now we've set v and we've assigned it as a hundred and we can print out the variable. So we'll go back to our print statement and instead of telling it exactly what to write like we did with the quotes when we did the string literals, we're just going to put the variable between the parentheses. So print v and when we run that it prints out the variable value. We can assign multiple variables. So we're going to call this variable n. We're going to assign it another number. And we're going to print n. And this time you see it prints v first, which is 100 on the first line. And then we print n, which we've given the value of 50, and we've printed that on the second line. Now if we assign the same variable a different value, so for instance we'll come down here below our print lines and we'll say v is assigned now a value of 500. When we print v below that we're going to see that it actually prints the 100 first because we've assigned it 100 and we print it here and then we reassign it to 500 and we print it here. So we see 100 the first line, 50 which is our n, 500 which is our new value for the variable v. As I said earlier we can also assign variables text. So for instance we're going to call the variable this class and assign it to Python and when we print this class it will print out Python. We can also assign multiple variables at one time. So we're going to assign class comma actually we're going to let's call this this class grade and school and we're going to set them to equal Python 11 in our school respectively And now we're going to print out this class, grade, and school. So we can say, we can see that it retained Python 11 and our school. So this is the first variable this class. We assigned it the first value here, Python. The second variable grade, it assigned it the second value. And the third variable school, it assigned it the third value. So we're going to remove all of this. 
Python is an object-oriented language. Almost every item of data in a Python program is an object of a type or class. Uh, we're going to look at this code here, print 100. When we run this code, we see that it outputs 100. When this happens, the interpreter creates an integer object, gives it a value of 100, and then displays it in the console. We can see this by using the built-in type function. So for instance, we're going to say print type 100. And when we run this, we can see our 100 and then class integer, which is the type of variable that this is. That works for all kinds of data types, so we'll set class, this class equals Python. We're going to print this class, and then we're going to print type this class. So we can see Python is our variable this class, and it's a class type string, which is what text is. A variable in Python is a symbolic name that is a reference to an object. Once the object is assigned to a variable, you can refer to that object by the name, but the data itself is still contained within the object. So for instance, when we set up our value equals 100, or V assigns it 100, this assignment creates an integer object with the value of 100 and assigns the variable v to point to that object. So we can see that if we assign another variable n and assign that to v and we print in, we see that it's going to print 100. And what happened here was Python doesn't create another object when we assigned n to v, but it simply creates a new s symbolic name or reference and then points to the same object that v pointed to. So we have our integer 100, and v is pointing to that integer, and now we have n pointing to the same integer. If we then set n to equal 50, now n is pointing to a different object. One additional note about objects, every object that's created is given a number that identifies it and that number is unique and no two objects will have the same identifier. Once an object's reference is orphaned, however, then that identifying number becomes available and can be used again by the program. And we can see this identifying number by using a built-in function called id. So print id, and we'll find the unique identifier for n, and we can see that it's printed out right here. Now up to this point, we've been 
naming our variables just single letters, but it is important, important to point out that when you're writing a program, you actually want these variables to be easily identified. So for instance, if we're making a variable for someone's name, we may want to call it first name. And we can have a bunch of letters here. We can use letters, combination of letters, uppercase, lowercase, digits, and underscores. However, we can't start a variable with a digit. It needs to start with a letter. And it's also case sensitive. So if we call our first variable first name all lowercase, our next variable first name with F being capitalized and we're going to print first name all lowercase and then first name with a capital F we see that we actually get both variables printed out. First name lowercase is the first one we printed out. First name with the F capitalized is the second one that we printed out. And again, just remember that you can use this in a program, first name and first name, and it will be two separate variables. However, it can get very confusing if you use the same name. Um, you have to remember which one was the uppercase F, which one was the lowercase F, so it's not good practice to do this. One more stipulation with naming variables. There are some re reserved words in Python that we can't use as objects. These things include things such as false, true, class, which is the reason why in the beginning of this tutorial I changed the class to this class rather than leaving it to class. Um, and I'll put up a list of some other reserved words that we cannot use as variables. So in this lesson we've gone over how to assign variables. We've talked about types of variables. We talked very briefly about Python being an object-oriented language. And we talked about naming conventions for variables.